sent off, very demonstrative, very upset on the bench, being held back by his own players. MLS Match Day 24, this is Instant Replay, and I am joining you, Christina Uncle, as Andrew Weeby is having a birthday celebration and has left me with the controversial calls over the weekend. So let's jump straight into it. New York City, Columbus, let's just start where everyone is tweeting at me, asking a million questions, because why not? This game had a lot to unpack. 69th minute, Cucho has issued a second yellow card, red card, for a reckless tackle by connecting on Chanel's face? The simple, straightforward answer is yes. This is an expected 100% misconduct for that yellow card that issued that red card. Pucho's first yellow card was for dissent, and that goes ahead and lays the ground for what was happening in New York City at Columbus, where the players and the coaches and the fans were not accepting the decisions in that game. And going into the 80th minute, where Columbus wants a PK for Yaboa, when Turnbull takes him down, but take a look, referee Boyka is right there and able to see. When you take a closer look, you see that the ball is actually caught underneath Yaboa when he ends up cutting back. Not much contact there in the feet for a penalty. Good decision by Boyka on there. But this is what is escalating the energy that is happening in Columbus and leads us to essentially what is the light that matches the entire fire? Diaz wins possession, moves the ball up the right side, down the line. This is where Columbus was frustrated on the foul selections. No foul given for Diaz in front of the assistant referee. Ball goes down and comes out right in front of the touch of Nancy. And it's at this point Nancy is incredibly frustrated. Nancy steps onto the field, red carded for the provocative gesture and stepping onto the field. It is the correct decision. Although we can understand the frustrations by Nancy, this is unacceptable behavior. All eyes are in Major League Soccer. People are looking up to this game. They're looking up to what the pros are doing and they're taking this back to the youth game, breaking this down even further. There was a bit of confusion as to why the referee Boyka was going to the VAR monitor again, especially since play had already ensued in that throw-in. Quick reminder on the VAR protocol, once restart happens, typically VAR is not able to be opened up except for, and this is the exception, if there was a violent conduct that occurred that had not been caught on that restart. Columbus's performance coach, Federico Pizzuto, throwing water at the fourth official when Nancy was dissenting towards the referee at that moment. This is violent conduct. Under Law 12, under team officials and sanctions, this is noted as violent conduct. At no time is anyone supposed to throw water, any types of items, at either another player, a coaching staff, or an official. Here, this was appropriate to go back, review it, and quickly dismiss him with the straight red card, which was further complicated for the fact that referee Boyka first issued a yellow card, which and in fact, he ended up giving the wrong card and instead went for the direct red card. Now we take you over to Red Bull Arena where New England takes on Red Bull at home and in the 60th minute, watch closely as you see Blessing Studs go straight into the upper thigh and into the groin area of Amaya. This is a straight red card for serious foul play. Not much to be had there. If you want to debate that, I'm guessing you're going to want to take those studs in an area where not many others would want to. Moving to the 93rd minute, a very complex play. Farrell strikes the ball, beautiful goal, back of the net, but taken away by a recommendation for VAR for offside as Veroni is standing in an offside position. The interpretation and analysis by the referee and the VAR is that Veroni impacted and interfered with the opponent, specifically here the goalie. Take a look. You can see a deflection by Barlow, and that deflection is what effectively prevented the keeper from being able to save this goal. Veroni did not materially impact and interfere with the opponent. Pro has come out and said that this decision should have been a good goal. This play is very similar to earlier in the season when New England played against NYCFC, where there was an interfering with an opponent taken away after a deflection by a defender. However, when the defender deflects it, and that is what materially impacts a goalkeeper from saving it, it doesn't matter whether or not there is an attacker in an offside position. The decision should be good goal. Finally, moving over to LAFC in San Jose. There are three incidents to take a look at. Referee Sabala and his team were busy that night. In the 23rd minute, VAR rescinds a handball offense on San Jose's Paul Barry. But let's break this down. The referee decision on the field was penalty after referee Sabala consults with assistant referee Rodersman on this to determine that, in fact, they did have handling. 
Good reminder that VAR is not able to make a recommendation until after the referees make a decision on the field. Watch as San Jose's Paul Burry, the ball hits his right thigh, and although a deflection doesn't automatically negate a handling offense. If you take a look at Marie's right arm, it is tight to his body. It hits the lower part of his elbow. We would consider this a natural movement and a correct decision to overturn that penalty and for it not to be. Good job by the VAR. Moving you over to the 41st minute where there is a shout for a penalty. San Jose wants against Palacio. When Ocampo takes the ball down, cuts to his left and finds himself on the ground. Watch closely as you see Ocampo. Once he cuts, his momentum takes him over more than any of the contact here. Correct decision on the field to not give a penalty. Another straightforward decision by referee Sabala. In the 55th minute, goalkeeper Daniel comes out and he conveniently jumps but uses his right arm to deflect the ball. Referee Sabala gives red card for denying an obvious goal scoring opportunity, handling offense outside of the penalty area. Correct call on this decision. Speaking of handballs, we are moving over to Toronto versus St. Louis. In the 11th minute, a controversial call, a VAR recommendation for a handling offense. Watch, on this set piece, the ball is struck into the wall, and if you look, the ball makes contact on the left arm of Petrata. The decision on the field is no penalty. VAR correctly recommends this down for a review. Referee Dujic goes and takes a look, and in his opinion, determines that it is in a natural position for the jumping. The preferred decision here is penalty for handling offense. He is making his body larger. Yes, he is jumping, however, his arm is still beyond his silhouette, and at that point, once the ball makes contact, this is an expected handling offense penalty. Moving to Seattle at Vancouver in the 43rd minute. Was there a handling offense or a cumulative handling offense? We take a look here, break down the first one. Strike on net, Johnson's coming and sliding in. Take a look, bottom right, hit, right foot, deflects the ball into the left arm of Burhalter. However, Burhalter's arm is outside of the silhouette. His left arm is still exposed. Yes, he's trying to pull it back, but it originated at the time of the strike outside of his silhouette. Here you have a handling offense for penalty. Now, some of you had questions as to whether or not there was a second handling offense. They taken a load in isolation that would not have been a handling. The clearance into Martins is by his own defender with the ball coming outside, not towards the goal. It's not typical when you have a defender clearing the ball that the other defender is purposely making themselves larger, taking up the space or a shot on goal. This standalone is not handling. Taking you to Minnesota versus Austin, where referee Chilowitz issues a penalty in the 46th minute by a challenge and tackle by Debassi. Was it a penalty? Take a look. Did Debassi touch the ball before he made any contact on Gallagher? Looking at the two different camera angles, one from where the referee's view should be, it is hard to tell whether or not contact on the ball occurred first. Take that reverse angle from where the goal line area is, and it is still very complicated to see whether or not Debassi made contact or if it was Gallagher's top of his foot that made contact on it prior to the collision. Due to the fact that there is no clear evidence that says Debassi clearly touched the ball first, the decision on the field remains as a penalty. Sporting KC at Houston. Take a look quick in the 60th minute as Arthur takes down Kinda in the box and referee Sagafi clearly points to the penalty. Clean, easy, careless penalty. Into the 99th minute, Houston ties it up 2-2. And as Kinda steps up to take the kickoff, he dummies it, which sends Fiera running in anticipation and in fury. Fiera approaches Kinda, two hands shoves him down into the ground and mayhem ensues. Referee Sagafi only issues a yellow card on this play. There is no recommendation for VAR. Sagafi feels that the two-handed shove is not brutal enough force. My opinion, this should have been a red card and should have been a VAR recommendation for violent conduct. Yes, is it two hands into the chest shoving him, but is this out of the context of the play? And the answer is yes. Football expectations while the ball is not in play that this type of behavior is not accepted.
And that's it for match day 24. What a week that Weeby gave me and decided to take off. Here's your birthday gift, Weeby. But if you see something, say something. Hashtag MLS Instant Replay. And remember, if you love critiquing referees and breaking down these plays, sign up and become a referee yourself. Go on to US Soccer Referee and find your nearest certification course. That's it for me, and see you next time!